When The Elder Scrolls 3 came out, I looked like this. Needless to say, I missed this game in its heyday. My first Elder Scrolls game was Skyrim. So in this series, Zoomer attempts, I'm gonna try a bunch of classic video games that I was too young to experience when they came out, starting with the game that I've attempted many times, but never finished, Morrowind. I woke up to the gravelly voice of soon-to-be Saint Jib. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. He asked me my name, and I answered, Mr. Nerevar. I chose a dark elf in this face and hair combo. I can't put my finger on why exactly, but the goatee, flat top, and earring combo screamed Mr. Nerevar to me. Next, it was time to create my class. Now, full disclosure here, I'm not going into this game completely blind. I watched some beginner guides and played the first couple of hours before. I knew I wanted to be a spell sword, so I followed Coffee Nut Gaming's guide. So go check him out for the whole rundown. And like every good Morrowind player, I stole the limeware platter. I got a ring from a barrel, got my orders to meet Caius Cassades, and was let loose on the world. My first step was to talk to Fargoth and give him his ring back for better prices at the trade house. I got myself a set of chitin armor and was ready to start exploring. Leaving the town to the west, I saw the wood elf fall from the sky. <coughs> this dripped out elf was named Tarheel. So naturally I took everything off of him and took his journal. I believe I may have found the correct formula for the spell I am developing. With it, I will be able to travel great distances without the need to pay others for the service. If all goes well, I will test out the new spell tomorrow. I believe I have worked out all of the possible complications. It will allow me to leap great distances covering many hundreds of miles. Never before has one been able to travel in this manner, vaulting from the ground, sailing through the sky, all without the terrible disorientation of a spell of flying. The time is almost upon me. My research is finished, and all of my calculations are checked and rechecked. They laughed at me when I suggested this. We'll see who laughs after I leap to the top of their towers and scream out my success. Well, Tarheel certainly got his calculations correct, but forgot one very important factor, landing. Now, obviously, I had to try out this spell, so I dropped to safe because I knew this was only going to end bad for me and took to the sky. That was kind of anticlimactic. Let's try this again. <laughs> That's better. Back to adventuring, I came across a dead tax collector. Looks like the Grim Reaper was the one collecting today. Before I reported the crime, I headed over to commit a crime myself, grave robbing. But almost like cosmic punishment, I was attacked by an assassin as I was resting outside of the tomb. Taken completely off guard, I put up a decent fight but was killed. <laughs> So this time, I got all my armor on with Tar Heel's Colovian fur helm to complete the drip. And I was ready to go for round two. Even though I was ready for him, I was still taken off guard. But after a close fight, I was able to defeat the assassin and loot his corpse. Then I was finally able to get a good rest to heal. The tomb was easy enough to go through. I had ghosts to fight, which aren't a huge problem since they do magic damage, and I chose the Atronach star sign, which gave me a 50% chance to absorb spells. Then, I got the reason why I came here. The Mentor's Ring, which buffs intelligence and willpower. Then it was time to continue my CIS Vardenfell by reporting the murder of Proceus to my goatee brother in the census office. Don't worry, Secusius. Detective Mr. Nerevar is on the case. Processus was a tax collector for the Empire. In a town like this, he's bound to have a ton of enemies. So many that I don't know where to start. So I tried a dear old friend of mine, Fargoth. Turns out my suspicions of Processus having many enemies were correct. Flaunting his wealth around the poor neighborhoods he'd just collected from. But I did get some information as to where to go next. 
Persesis was romantically involved with a local, a Dunmer named Thavari. Quick break here. I can't read at the best of times, so I know I'm mispronouncing a lot of these names. Anyway, back to the murder. After talking with her, I learned some information that cracked this case wide open. Apparently, Processus had a heated altercation with a man named Forn Gilnith recently. So I made my way over to a shack to confront him. FBI, open up! I thought I'd have to use some advanced persuasion to get a confession. But Forn was very forthcoming with information. I had a choice to make in that moment. Do I turn a blind eye or do I follow the Empire's law? In the end, I was getting paid for siding with the Empire, so my decision was very clear. Even though I was armored and had a sword, Forn put up a good fight and showed the advantages of unarmed combat. In Morrowind, fatigue is king. It determines your hit chance, and if you run out of fatigue, you get knocked down. Unarmed attacks only do damage to your fatigue, at first. Once your fatigue is drained from the combo of being punched and using fatigue to swing your weapon, you fall on the ground. That's when unarmed does health damage, which at first still kinda sounds underpowered until you get into a fight with one of these guys and get knocked down immediately after getting back up. After I brought Processus Killer to justice, I brought his ring back to his partner. It may be a small gesture, but at least she'll have some closure. Then, more importantly, I went back to the census office for my payday. After solving that crime, I made my way over to the bandit cave by the Silt Strider. I've seen this cave being referred to as a test for your build. I took out the first bandit with ease, freed the slaves, and found out why the Atronach sign was a good choice. The fight with the wizard was a breeze with the spell absorption. It had me hoping that I would be running into more magic users later on in the run. Although the star sign only has a 50% spell absorption, I want to make an enchantment to boost that percentage. Once I cleared out the cave, I made my way over to Balmora. On my way, I stopped by another bandit-infested cave. I was feeling a little overconfident and was one-tapped by a giant hammer to the face. <clears throat> I attempted this cave a few more times, sometimes getting demolished by the same Nord with the hammer, sometimes being killed by the Dumber in the beginning of the cave. I learned a valuable lesson from this. Whenever I start to feel confident in this game, this game will find a way to put me back in my place. Every encounter has the ability to completely humble me. As a Skyrim player, this is a very new concept. After deciding to make the smart play and leave the cave alone, I continued my travel to Belmora. Along the way, I came across a Breton woman who was robbed. Thankfully for me, she didn't send me into another bandit hive to take care of them actually the opposite. This bandit apparently put all of his points into speech and was able to rob her of her jewelry and her heart. That joke was so fucking stupid. <laughs> anyway, I went back to Pelagiad and delivered Muri's glove to Nellas, who gave me a letter to send back to her. With the goodwill I gained from my stint in law enforcement, I justified my next felony of opening someone else's mail. Murray. Truly, I was enchanted with you from the moment I saw you. I beg your forgiveness for my past transgressions. While I cannot imagine what a woman of your beauty and breeding would see in a rogue such as me, I thank the gods that you have sent for me. I will come to you as soon as I can. Until then, yours, Nevos. <laughs> anyway, I delivered the letter and went back to the road. Here, I tried to redeem myself from the last bandit cave I went into. This proved to be the ego boost that I needed as I was able to hold my own against the bandits. One thing I found here that I appreciate is that every bandit here has a unique name. They're not just labeled as bandit. I think it's cool that they become a little more of a person rather than a nameless enemy. That being said, no amount of humanizing them stopped me from tearing through and wiping out the whole gang. I was here for loot. And while I found a modest amount of gold, I found something more valuable. Books. Nerd! Now this is something that I'm excited to find. Not only because they're worth a decent amount of money, but because they are filled with lore. I won't bore you with reading them, but just know off camera, I will be reading every single book I come across. Balmora is only a short walk from the Bandit Cave, so the rest of my trip to the town was uneventful. 
Ah, the town of Balmora. I've gotten here a couple times before. I love the aesthetic of this place. My first stop was the Mages Guild, which thankfully for me was almost immediately to the right after you enter the gate. So now Detective Mr. Nerevar is part of the Balmora Guild of Mages. My first duty was to get shrooms for some hippie. Full disclosure again, I've done this quest before, so I grabbed the mushrooms that I needed when I was still kicking it in Sedanine. So that took me to my next duty of planting fake soul gems in Galbadir's desk. Now my time as a detective made it real easy to plant fake evidence. Once that was done, I got promoted and was given more important duties. I was being sent off to shake down someone for overdue guild dues and convince an ex-Telvani wizard to join the guild. Or kill them both. Rannis isn't fucking around. I accepted this quest, but I wanted to explore the other guilds as well. So I went next door and joined the Fighters Guild. My first duty was to clear out a house from some cave rats. So I crossed the river to the other side of town and talked to Dreen Thelis, who apparently has a thing for pillows. Like she really likes pillows. The first rat was right there in her bedroom, which was easy to take care of. Upon closer inspection, she also keeps a copious amount of pillows in her bedroom, but that was nothing compared to what I was going to find later. Upstairs there were more rats and a whopping three basket full of pillows, each containing 25, bringing our grand total to 90. My next task for the Fighters Guild was to kill a couple of egg poachers. Kind of a big jump from rats to two people, but hey, who am I to complain? Now Morrowind feeling like an alien world really shows in these egg mines. There's a whole booming industry where people mine the eggs of a Quarma Queen. The whole place is set up like any old mine, but you also have Quama workers, foragers, and scribs just walking around doing their thing. Anyway, I took care of the poachers and hightailed it out of there back to Balmora. For some reason, I was really feeling like keeping up the fighter skill quest for the time being. So I was then sent to Caldera to take care of some Telvani agents who apparently were involved with the Thieves' Guild. And I get a sneaky suspicion that Itis FireEye has some connection to the Thieves' Guild. Suspicions aside, I set off for Caldera. After getting directions, I stayed in town for a little to explore. I was in Caldera for personal business as well. I wanted to find a very particular merchant, a non-hostile scamp named Creeper. Creeper! Oh man! After I sold off some stuff and had my fun, I was off to the ebony mine to take care of business. Along the way, I ran into a scantily clad Nord on the side of the road. Obviously, I stopped to talk to him. Apparently, he's been robbed by a witch, so I offered to help him track her down and kill the witch responsible. But after finding her, I found out her side of the story. The Nord was getting a little too handsy, so she paralyzed him and took his axe away to punish him. Ultimately, I sided with Sosia and had to fight Hlormar. Again, you can see just how devastating unarmed combat can be in a one-to-one -one fight. Thankfully, I had some potions to restore fatigue in my inventory. If it wasn't for these potions, I probably would have died. I spoke to Sosia and got more potions as thanks and continued on my way to the ebony mine. But once again, I got sidetracked. I came across a redguard woman who needed an escort to Gnarmok in exchange for some enchanted boots. But not just any enchantment. The Boots of Blinding Speed. I've been cutting out a lot of the walking sections, but anyone who's played Morrowind knows that your movement speed is painstakingly slow at times. So I jumped on the opportunity to get some boots that will make me run faster. Gnarmok isn't too far from where the quest starts, so it wasn't too much trouble to find it. That being said, I did get killed the first time because I thought this land jellyfish looking thing was friendly. It was not. But the second time around, we both made it to Gnarmok safely, and I got my boots. Oh, that's why they call them boots of blinding speed. Honestly, I still think these are pretty useful. Yeah, you can't see what's in front of you, but you can use the mini-map on the bottom right to make sure you stay on the road. So if you've been somewhere before and you have a general idea of which road to take, you can make it to your destination pretty fast. Finally, after all those distractions, I was ready to get on with my contract. So I found my way to the Caldera Ebony Mine and took out my targets. My lightning spell took care of most of them, and I just had to finish off one of the agents with my sword. Hence the playstyle, Spell Sword. So I was back off to Balmora again to get paid and do some shopping. 
The first thing on my list, I actually didn't spend any money on at all. I was off to a guard tower to pick up an enchanted sword called the Sword of White Woe, which they just keep sitting on top of a closet where anyone can just jump up and take. Then the actual shopping started. I went on a whole shopping spree in the Mages Guild in Balmora and in Sagerth Mora. Then I thought it was finally time to speak to Caius Cassades to progress the main story. So I found his house in town and was told I needed to learn about the sixth house and the Nerevarim prophecy from some guy named Hasafet in the Balmora Fighters Guild. But obviously it wasn't going to be so easy. He told me in order to get his help, I had to dive into a Dwemer ruin to find a Dwemer puzzle box. So off I went to dive through some labyrinthine ruins to find a tiny box. I had a decent time here. The ruins have a really cool feeling to them, like the Dwemer were an ancient race of people that were too advanced for the age they lived in. The workshop in the automaton skulking around the metal floors is haunting. Speaking about haunting, I love that they have the ghost of the Dwemer that used to live there. And I really like that they're not just some generic shade looking ghost. They actually have Dwemer models so you can sort of put a face to the people that once lived there. It took me a long time to find the cube I was looking for. I was going all over the place searching every nook and cranny and finding some pretty valuable loot along the way. I wasn't upset by this at all. The ruins are super interesting and complex. I also was able to try out a new tactic. I ran into this hammer wielding bandit who killed me pretty quick. So when I faced him again, I used a calming spell I bought before coming here and started attacking him with my sword before he had any time to react. Admittedly, I did have to check online to see where the puzzle box was hiding because I thought I checked the entire ruin and maybe just passed by it. Turns out there was an entrance to a room I didn't notice. So I picked it up and went back to ask fat anybody's to get the info I needed. And I think that's where I'm gonna end episode one. I'm having a ton of fun playing Morrowind, and I feel like this run I'll actually be able to finish the game. So stay tuned for the next episode of Zoomer Attempts Morrowind. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and let me know of any other classic games you'd like to see a Zoomer attempt. I already have some good ones on the list, but I'm always looking for more. This has been Red Handed Gaming. Stay safe, and God bless.